Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to Subs World How to Basic Strat Episode 3 Seeding Shore. Um, I'm not going to bullshit you guys. I wanted to do this BG last because it is a shit show to try and explain, I think. Um, cuz if you if you don't have a team that is able to synergize and understand the big picture, you're going to lose, okay? But my favorite advice to give you on this map is if your team doesn't know what you're doing, how can the enemy team predict what you're doing? There we go, boys. So getting into this, right, this is how I like to play it, and this is how a lot of other teams typically play it. Um, I play it a little bit different than the normal basic strat. Um, a lot of lower... It's strange. A lot of lower MMR teams, right, they typically just ghost a node, right? They typically leave a node open or maybe like one person. Um, so maybe like five here, five here, um, ghosting this one. Something along those lines that a lot of teams like to do. I don't know why. They just give free nodes every single time. Um, but that's not what you want to do. And I'm going to teach you guys on how to win this map effectively. Okay. So... Very basic. You're going to have two teams of three and a team of four. Okay. It doesn't really matter where you send your teams, group one, group two, and group three, right? But you kind of want to split your comp into more of like an arena style comp, right? So the first nodes to spawn always, every single time. Oh, sorry. What am I doing wrong? I thought I clicked that. Is this one? Ruins, Ridge, and Tar Pits, okay? If I can give you like a, a bit of advice, download Reporter. If you guys don't know what it is, I made a YouTube video in the description about the add-ons that I use. It's the map that everybody asks about. It's the map that I use in the top right. When you mouse over a node, it tells you how long it has until it spawns. It tells you the name. Okay, it's super, super, super important to have that type of add-on for this map, for any map really, but more specifically for this map. And the reason being is because when you like open a normal map, it just says like Azerite collection or some shit like that, right? And plus you shouldn't even be opening your map because you need to be paying attention to what's going on in front of you. So make sure you guys get Reporter. If you don't get anything from, the, um, from this video, just get Reporter. Okay. But anyways, I like to split my groups up into three type of arena style comps with an extra DPS that can maybe maybe change the outcome of a certain team fight. Or you can do two groups of four and a tank and a healer in the other group. It's kind of on how you decide maybe what the enemy team is doing. Um, maybe the enemy team is running a tank, so maybe you want to run a tank. It kind of just... It kind of just depends on how you feel because there's no right answer to winning this BG, right? It's just things that I prefer to win the game. Um, so let's say you do have a tank, right? And let's say Ruins spawns in like 30 seconds because uh, Waterfall was just capped. Um, everybody's at Ridge and you have like two or three people at Tar Pit. And they're both healers at Tar Pit, right? You never want your healers clumped up together when a giant team fight's going because you always want a dps to utilize cc and whatnot and if your tank is in the big team fight he's wrong okay you need to be telling your tank to get to the node that you can spin with the least amount of people it's like i, th I think a lot of people refer to it as min maxing right so let's say it's a three versus three at tar pits can you pull a dps away to put more pressure on ridge and still spin tar pits? If so, then you're you're minimalizing how many people you need versus the max amount of people that they have, which is three. So your so your ridge team has the advantage of a player up because the enemy can't get tar pits, right? So you need to start thinking about that. You need to rotate on your uh, positioning, all sorts of stuff. Me as a rogue, I like to take uh, a boomkin. Um, another rogue, um, that's about it, right? Typically I run with a boomkin or another rogue in my group and I like to 
go to the furthest node away possible. So let's say tar pit is up, uh, tide pools up, and crash site is up, right? Excuse me. So I would be at crash site with like a a boomkin or another rogue or something, right? While everybody else, like all eight other players, are up here. Okay. And one key thing to note is that you want a healer, right? Rotating kind of in between these two nodes, right? Kind of kind of healing a little bit of both groups. You don't want them sitting at one node. It's very beneficial to have a healer, maybe like a paladin with uh, the steed or, I mean, you shouldn't be running a misweaver at the current state of the game, but if you have a misweaver, maybe rotating back and forth, a warlock eight, something along those lines to, if they overpressure tide pools, the, the healer can rotate, right? If you have nodes like this, make sure everybody's up north. And me personally, as a rogue, like I said, I like to be alone by myself um, down south. Okay. The only way I'm losing crash site is if it's like a two versus four situation. Okay. If it's a two versus three, I can spin the node by myself for fucking forever. Okay. Um, with these nodes, Maybe have a less DPS at tide pools and have your tank sitting here with a healer and a DPS. So like three people with your floating healer, right? And making sure that your tank is spinning and CCing while your main team is just shitting all over this team. Okay. That that's like rotational wise, right? You want, you want your two closest nodes to be like a team fight type of thing. Um, if the nodes are kind of separate, you want your tank not where everybody is. You want to you want to try and min max, like I had mentioned earlier. And your furthest node away, I like to be alone, so I like to bring my druid and get to that site that's really far away. Um, something a lot of players make, and it's especially lower MMR and surprisingly higher MMR. A lot of teams will go to a node before it even spawns. So let's say crash site is capped. Okay. And shipwreck, uh, no, that's a bad example. So crash site was just capped. The team fight is at ridge, and there's the demon hunter and a healer spinning at ruins, and the rogue and boomy that just capped crash site or whatever. Their new node is in tar pits. That is the new furthest node that's going to be spawning. Well, that node doesn't spawn for like another 30 seconds, right? It could literally be any node. It could be Overlook, Waterfall, it, it doesn't matter, right? A lot of players will go across the map doo -doo 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 -doo, without affecting anything at all, right? They will get there and they will sit there for like 15 seconds doing nothing, right? Like absolutely nothing. It's not utilizing their time. It's a huge waste of time just sitting there waiting for the node to spawn. What I like to do is I'll fucking run past Ridge. I'll be like, hey, guys, I'm going to kidney shot this target. I'll kid kidney shot him. And most of the time I get a kill and then I'm out. Like I'm gone. I'm not wasting like any more seconds here at Ridge. I'm not fucking around. I'm getting to where I need to be. But I'm also taking a second to help my team out. And if I can help my team out, let's say that one kill is exactly what they need. Then I can have more people coming to Tar Pits. They get Ridge, Shipwreck's next, oh, sorry. Shipwreck's the new, no what the hell? Shipwreck is the new node, right? Ridge is gone. The entire team fight rotates towards Tar Pits. Um, maybe I have to sap for a few seconds for my Ridge team to get there. And then I can go fuck around with Shipwreck or I can kidney shot a target that lands, anything, right? And that can separate Bad teams versus really good teams if you're learning and you know how to manage your time. Now, don't get me wrong. I've fucked up a few times where I've stopped that ridge and then I've gotten caught out and then tar pits was given away. So you kind of have to be careful with how you manage your time. Um, sometimes I, I like to stop at another node. If there's about 20 seconds left, I can fight for 10 seconds and then I can get to another, another node within 10 seconds. That's just how I like to play. And... But don't get me wrong, I have given nodes away for free because teams have slowed me down. Um, I didn't manage my time correctly. Like I and I and this is I'm talking about like 2,600, 2,700 teams that I've not I've given away free nodes because of that. But 
doing that has also given me a lot of nodes um, when I do make a stop by at Ridge or whatever site that it may be. Another really important factor, right, is if your team has like, I don't know, four or five people dead, um, the tank died with the, and the healer is still up or whatever the case may be, right? It doesn't really matter. If your like main team fight is dead, don't send them off one by one off of the boat. Because if you do so, let's say your team just wiped that ridge. It was a six versus six and your team uh, died, right? And you lost all six or you lost three players and the other three are like getting ready to die and your other players are spawning. But if like, it's really hard to time it. Okay. So let me, let me try and explain this. So it's a six versus six, three of your teammates die and your next three teammates die within like 10 seconds of the other three, right? So everybody's on the boat. You have six players on the boat and three players are spawning 10 seconds before, okay? And they're like, oh, I can go spin Ridge or whatever. Don't, like don't do that. Because those three players that land at Ridge, they might be able to spin it, right? Only for a few seconds before those five or six people that are at Ridge still, they're gonna get completely annihilated. And then the next three people, and you have this like constant cycle of three people down, three people landing, dying, and it's like a really shitty cycle to get in. If you notice that this is happening with your team, it is more beneficial to just give them the node and have all six players alive and jump at once. Because the quicker you can get your entire team alive, and healthy and cooldowns are back the more pressure you're going to be allowed to put on the map as opposed to constantly just sending like one person in because this game is really hard to like kind of like like funnel back in because there's so much pressure on singular nodes right maybe you could do that with like a, a one versus two situation right let's say there's two people or it's a two versus two and the healer dies and the tank is still alive the tank might be able to spin and the healer can jump right away, right? I'm not saying you can't spin a two versus two, but if, if you're like jumping into a huge ass team fight, you're postponing your entire team's comeback to get the next nodes, to put them onto a, a split res themselves, right? Um, and that's another beneficial thing, right? If you're shitting on a team fight, like you're just crushing them. CC a target at the very end and kind of maybe like leave them alive for a little bit, right? Um, don't let them spin the base, but leave them alive, alive, cyclone, cheap shot, whatever the case may be. Because if you kill all the players like in a very short, similar time, then they're all going to land at the same time, right? But if you kill, kill one or two people, um, maybe 10, 15 seconds later, then the enemy team is either going to do exactly what I just said. They're going to, they're going to land three players. And you guys are gonna shit on them, and then those next players that you like kind of fucked with, then they land, and it, it kind of like uh, they start funneling in, and you're just getting kill after kill after kill, right? Because you messed with them, and so then they have to wait, they have to give a free node, just something along those lines. So sometimes it's a little bit official to play with your food. You know what I mean? Um, another good tip is if a node has two healers, it's also a good idea to min max, right? get those get those big dps out because you're not going to win that node man you need to find that node that has that one healer with your big hitters and send them there right that is super beneficial i see too many teams like they they have all their dps at a node that has like two healers and a tank or something right like you're you're wasting your dps dude you're not going to kill them i mean you might but the rest of the team that has like one healer and like four DPS or some shit is shitting all over your team. Okay. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think there was one other key note that I had. Oh, if there's two people alive, you don't have to kill them, man. Like a rogue can easily communicate. Hey, I'm going to blind this guy. He does them trick it. And then I'm going to kidney this guy. And then I'm gonna put him in a duel. Like if you watch some of my, sh my seething shores, like, a lot of times I don't kill the enemy team, right? Um, if you look at my damage done, it's some people would say it's pathetic. But if you look at my cheap shots, my saps, my blinds, my kidneys during a game, 
it, it's above any other rogue I've ever faced. Well, most of the time, right? Um, so make sure you remember that. Um, and if you're trying to, maybe like everything's on DR, like don't quit wasting damage into those targets that you're not going to kill with no, with no stuns, you know? Like, especially in a two versus two, like I know you guys have seen my videos where I CC one and then I, I CC the other one and I'm telling my Drew to cap, um, all sorts of stuff. And if I don't, if we don't get the cap, right, uh, either because I fucked up or because the enemy team used a defensive or a trinket or whatever the case may be. Um, a lot of times when I spawn in, uh, a druid and I will go ruins and the enemy team will send two players. I'm instantly sap blinding because I know one of them is going to trinket and it can, it can put us in the advantage of getting that node sooner, the faster I get uh, their trinkets and whatnot for a rogue. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps, man. Um, this game is still super hard to win if you don't have a team that communicates, man. So make sure you have a team that communicates. Make sure they know or they know the 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 names of the nodes, man. If you don't, it's super easy to just look at reporter, and it will tell you the exact node. If you don't have time to look at reporter, and let's say Temple is spawning, I'm like, hey, dude, uh, group two, go north, right? I mean, everybody knows what north is, you know. But I hope this helps. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, you guys are crushing the support. But thank you guys. You guys have a wonderful good night. Peace.